This is Vinny's watch. The West Coast Conference season rolls on through sunny Southern California. The surf is up and so are the Gonzaga Bulldogs looking for their fifth consecutive win. It's Gonzaga at Pepperdine. It's next. Well, if you're watching from the Inland Northwest, eat your heart out. Welcome to Malibu, California. Pepperdine hosting now number 23 Gonzaga at the Firestone Fieldhouse in Malibu. It's West Coast Conference basketball. It's nice to see everyone again. Greg Heister along with Craig Elo. And Craig, I think Gonzaga now, after losing three in a row, four of five, they're looking for their fifth consecutive win here tonight. They seem to have turned things around. They really have, and their opponent tonight is a weaker opponent, so they're just going to have to, like what you said, put their foot down on their throats and start stomping. And there's a lot of reasons we can talk about Gonzaga's turnaround, but let's talk about sophomore Austin Day. He's been absolutely phenomenal in this five-game stretch. Yeah, two games that were phenomenal. Back-to-back 20-point -back games. You can see he averaged 22.5 points, eight rebounds on 75% shooting, and it was a big three-pointer in the uh, Santa Clara game that helped GU get off to a great run. And the reward was being named West Coast Player of the Week. Now, Tom Asbury, he's back at the head coach position for Pepperdine. He was there through the early to mid-90s. They were the standard in the West Coast Conference. They dominated. He's trying to get them back, but it's a youthful movement. He's got four freshmen in the starting lineup. Yeah, they are very young and inexperienced, but he says the one thing that you can always do is play defense. Well, he's got some good players in the, in to, to work with, and one of them is Michael Thompson. He's the brother of Clay Thompson at WSU. Michael Thompson, a really good swing man, 6'6", six, six, can shoot the ball from outside, loves to pick and pop, so the Zag's going to have to watch. He doesn't roll to the basket. He wants to shoot the ball from outside. And then Keon Bell, this young man plays the most minutes of any any of the waves out there, but he comes off the bench to create spark and energy. So that's how he'll be used tonight. And you know, not to rub it in, but we wanted to <laughs> shoot this stand up outside tonight because we know it's snowy and it's cold back in the inland northwest. Well, it's almost 70 degrees here tonight in Southern California. We've got great basketball for you. It's Gonzaga, it's Pepperdine, one of the great rivalries in the history of the West Coast Conference. It's coming up next. Well, the fans of Pepperdine are ready inside Firestone Fieldhouse for number 23, Gonzaga. 3,000 fans uh, should be filling this arena. We'll have to wait and see if they can sell it out. How many finally show up before we tip off the ball? There's the cheerleaders. Heister and Elo, we're ready for game number four in the West Coast Conference schedule now for Gonzaga. As we take a look at the starters, first for Gonzaga, Austin Day, Matt Bolden, Josh Heitfeld, the center, Stephen Gray, and the reigning West Coast Conference Player of the Year, Jeremy Pargo, at point guard. Mark Few, the head coach. As we take a look at the starting lineups for Pepperdine, Taylor Darby, Michael Thompson, Corbin Moore, Keon Bell, and Ryan Holmes. Michael Thompson, the star on this team right now, leading the way with 11 points a game. The head coach is Tom Asbury in his first season during this run, his seventh overall is the head coach at Pepperdine. And we are underway in Malibu, California. Glad you're along. This is Bolden with it on the far side, number 15 for Gonzaga. He's been red hot since the start of conference play for the Zags. And now Pargo near side as Day posting up. And now turns, spins, baseline jumper way off, rebound Bell for Pepperdine. Now he moves it hard right into the corner. Gonzaga doing a great job defensively to get back that time, Craig. Yeah, transition defense is going to be a very much of a key for them tonight. I think Pepperdine wants to get a lot of easy baskets if they can. Bell, first shot of the game for Pepperdine is off. Rebound day, outlet near side to Parker. Heitfeld goes right to the low block for Gonzaga. Holding and out Gray, the open three for the top. In and out. Fargo had it, tipped around, grabbed by Thompson for Pepperdine. So you know, with a young team, Greg, you're going to get a lot of energy in those what, first three, four minutes. So the Pepperdine Wave's doing a nice job matching Gonzaga's energy coming out of the blocks. This is Holmes for three. That one's way off. 
It'll be Gonzaga basketball. Important for Pepperdine, though, Craig, to come out with this sort of energy, find out what Gonzaga team is going to show up, and see if they can just play through the energy. And who knows how long it could last if they can stay in the game early. Well, again, you're young. You're playing a team that has Gonzaga on their uniforms. You've heard about them your whole career, probably, from high school on. Now you're getting an opportunity to play them. So, yeah, I would think you'd want to match energy in the game right now. Great feed, Bolden to Heitfeld. Thought Bolden did a really nice job of catching the ball, using one dribble to get himself to a better passing angle. That's when you want to use your dribble. You want to improve, improve your passing angle, release pressure. But Bolden that time used it to get a great angle to get a bounce pass <laughs> into the post. Here's Thompson. Jump shot away. That's long. They had the rebound. Picked back by more than Austin Day with his first block of the game. He averages over two. Matt Bolden with a dribble. Zags as a team, Greg, average 5.6, so six blocks a game. So it's going to be tough for Pepperdine to get shots off. And Gonzaga with the early 5-0 lead with the three ball by Josh Heitfeld. His percentage has fallen under 40%, but he's still such a unique player at 6'11", able to shoot from that spot. Yeah, and, you know, really, he's 38% on the year, but 55% here. I mean, I'm looking at Austin Day. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. 0 for 4 in conference play so far. So he made his first three-point field goal. Turnover there, Gonzaga basketball. Mark Few, 248 wins in his uh, career now as the head coach at Gonzaga. Been at that school for 20 years. Now in his 10th season as the head coach. You know, through my whole NBA career, the longest place I was at is Cleveland for seven years. Now been in Spokane for 10, so that doesn't even come close to what you just said. 20 years in one place. His roots are really deep down in Spokane. Heitfeld now with five points for Gonzaga. I'm sorry, Heitfeld with all seven points for Gonzaga. Holden. Great defense there by Gonzaga, and that's the different Zag team as they look up court. Heitfeld off to a tremendous start for Gonzaga. Well, well Zip Zags. Have we seen anything different from Gonzaga in the past? Josh Heitfeld's beat big guys down the floor on, a, on many occasions for the Zags, and again doing it tonight. And you're right, he's on the scoreboard all by himself. Bell drives. This is Moore back to Thompson, long three, short. Stephen Gray on the run out, and he'll go to the free throw line. No, nope. foul before the shot. Gonzaga basketball. So it's important, Craig, for Pepperdine to weather this early storm by the Sags, <laughs> if possible. This is a team only averaging 50 points a game since uh, the West Coast Conference season has begun. So they're up against it before this game even started. But it's important now. They're at home. They've got to protect this floor. Yeah, and, and with the lineup that he has out there, uh, what three freshmen? One senior and one sophomore. Coach Asbury, we got a good look at uh, just a while ago, has decided not to call a timeout, being a 9-0 run. He's going to let these guys try to get through it, play through it, try to learn through it. Skip pass to Gray. Day at the free throw line. Bolden from the wing. And Gonzaga leads at 12 zip. And this has been the problem for Pepperdine in all of the West Coast Conference games. Getting off the slow start, St. Mary's built huge leads in their win over Pepperdine and went on to win uh, very big in that game. And this is an appropriate timeout. Coach Asbury has to find some offense in this game as Arsenio Hall just walked into the arena here to watch this game. <laughs> you, you recognized him, huh? Sure. He's hard to mess, but no, I totally agree with everything you just said. It's uh, it, it's been a, an Achilles heel for Pepperdine. They're not a good offensive team. They only shoot, they shoot actually for the season below 40%, so you're not going to make a lot of shots.